Talk 360. Talk 360 for in-depth analysis on the week's news with Latif. Good afternoon to you. 17 minutes after 4 o'clock. This is Eric Latif and you're just in time for Talk 360. Today we have uh, basically a couple of issues to discuss. Number one, we have the ICC case and we know what has happened to Francis Mudaura. He's back home. The man is smiling once again. And then we have Raila Odinga who says he shall not be coward, he must seek justice at the Supreme Court as stipulated in the Constitution of Kenya. And in the studio with me, I have Dismas Mokua, he's the Vice President of Sadiq East Africa. I have uh, Benjin Dolo, Founder Director of the Organization for National Empowerment, ONE. And I have David Matsanga, he's an international conflict resolution expert and a man who has forever been talking about the ICC and saying these cases against these gentlemen are going to come crumbling. Dr. Matsanga, yes. are, are you the prophet who nobody listened to? Well, I knew right from the beginning, five years ago, the manner in which this case, invocation of Article 15 of the Roman Statute was hurriedly done. I knew the chief prosecutor who had flowed every rule, faked witnesses, coached witnesses through certain NGOs under whose membership is well known. I knew it, it would, it would not stand scrutiny. And I have been vindicated. I have the best victory so far. However, in this case, we hear Fatou Ben Sile <coughs> saying that um, one of the key witnesses, actually the key witness, yes was uh, smoked out and bribed. No, who smoked? <laughs> but let me tell you one thing. Fatu cannot produce, and that is why I'm going to court on Tuesday. My lawyers have filed a perjury case against Justice Ekaterina, Louis Moreno Campo, Fatu, for telling lies. Let me tell you, this is the book that finished the ICC. Mm. I told people, the, the book, just yes. for the benefit of the reader. Witness the book, number four. The book is entitled... Is it how yes. Ocampo flowed the Kenyan cases. Witness number four. Ocampo mentioned witness number four 214 times in court. I was in court. Mm -hmm. And he said, witness number four did each and everything with Uhuru Kenyatta, Muthaura, Uhuru Kenyatta, Muthaura, Ali, Uhuru Kenyatta, Muthaura, 214 <coughs> times. So I sat down. I wanted to know whether this witness, number four, is a real witness. I found out, and I'm telling you frankly, do you know that Kenyans know this witness has no protection order? That's why he ca she cannot charge me because I found a church goer in Texas who could talk to everybody. Have you ever seen of a witness who has a Facebook? <laughs> a Facebook, he's texting people. Luis Moreno Campo gave an interview the other day and he yes. said, number one, I, I, from what I did, uh, one of the, th the things that brought peace to Kenya in this last election is the actions that I took. But secondly, it's one of the things that I kept saying that we need to protect these witnesses and we did not protect them and some people went and smoked them out, and now we know it. So one of them is Dr. David Matsang. I am not, I did not, and I have never seen this witness. I have investigated, found his clues through Switzerland, mm -hmm. found these documents in the ICC itself. I've given evidence to the ICC. A heap of file. I found it. I told Ocampo, yeah, man, what is this? Ocampo said, file an application. I don't want to talk to you. The whole world saw me in front of ICC trying to ask the chief prosecutor to take this file back. He did not. Let me tell you why witness number four is very important. Witness number four said he went to state house and saw President Kibaki, Muthaura, Huru Kenyatta, and Hussein Ali. He went to Nairobi club, saw Muthaura, Huru Kenyatta, and blah, blah, blah. But in actual sense, witness number four recanted his evidence in 2010, Latif. From 2010 to September 2011, surely a whole institution of ICC that has billions, billions of dollars given by taxpayer did not see a mistake of a recanted evidence and they produced it as a factual to confirm Huru Kenyatta's 
uh, uh, indictment right. to the ICC. So here we are. We we now have uh, Fatou Ben Souda saying, you know what, I cannot sustain charges <coughs> of my case against uh, Francis Mudaura, so I've dropped it. And then uh, basically this, this just shows that what Fatou Ben Souda is saying is, uh, my predecessor, who was my boss at that time, came yes. to court and did not say uh, about this witness, and I cannot sustain charges of, of we, using this witness. Benji, does this say something about Luis Moreno Campo? What I know, Latif, is that this is a very serious matter. This is a most serious matter, as a, indeed. Um, the reason we are at The Hague is because of the continued lethargy, uh, the continued lack of purpose for most African states, the unwillingness to set up and stand um, proper and strong institutions. Uh, I know that the issue that Dr. Matsanga is talking about is a most serious issue. It is also a most sensitive issue. Um, the possibility of tampering with witnesses, and here I'd just like to uh, note that he makes a point when he says that the ICC uh, process could be more robust. I'd like to refer him, though, to one Patrick Fitzgerald, the prosecutor from Chicago, a man described, first of all, as a senior bachelor that lives uh, on his own in an apartment in Chicago, that pursued relentlessly um, President Bush's chief of staff in the VP's office, Scooter Libby. Um, the president called a press conference at some point in the end of 2004 and asked the American people to support him because they were in the process um, of executing a war. What was happening at the time, uh, just for the benefit of viewers, is that the FBI agents were going <laughs> okay, into the White House day in, day out. And yes. why this is very important is because Patrick Fitzgerald has been described, and I quote, as a relentless pit bull roaming in a yard. Um, Luis or, or, or Moreno Ocampo could probably have done a finer job. However, I believe that the charges, the reason for us going to ICC are very, very clear. And that tampering of witnesses is absolutely, in these corrupt systems on these shores of the world, is absolutely possible. And so I don't, I wouldn't throw away the baby with the bathwater. I think that serious issues uh, led to the conflict in 2008. I think that certain people are responsible for those issues, I think that they could have tied the knots a little, uh, you know, better. But I, I don't think, in a sense, that the case has fallen apart per se. Two things I'd like to say very quickly, Latif, is um, it's astounding to me that the ICC does not seem to have very effective, um, you know, mechanisms to deal with OJ, obstruction of justice, which is what Scooter Libby was uh, pursued on after the other charges didn't meet the threshold and they gave him a mandatory sentence of 30 years committable only uh, by the His Excellency, the, the president of, 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 of that country. But secondly, also um, perjury charges. Yeah. This is, I, I think that the perjury, I think that whoever is fighting these charges is very tactical. Um, the perjury would be on the witnesses. There has to be very serious consequences when you come in and take an oath and say that you are with Mudara somewhere, and it turns out and to later not be true. You, you the, say I wasn't. Yeah, but so the perjury is not so much on the on the. I I, I want I want to come in on here. the prosecutor, but on the witnesses. There has got to be consequences. Something is I, very I, I wrong with how in, this I, court is. I, I don't want international law versus national law. There is a difference here. Mm -hmm. My my brother, thank you very much for conceding that I have exposed this case, a flaw, I'm a whistleblower. I blew the whistle because there was something going wrong. I want to refer you to the case of the Yugoslavian chief prosecutor. You, Ndolo is talking about a national level in America. We are talking about international temple of justice. The chief prosecutor of the Yugoslavian tri uh, tribunal just visited the home of the suspect and had dinner drinks with the relatives and other people. That woman went on trial. The whole pro international prosecutor. What I'm saying is that don't turn the perjury thing to, to, to be small. It's not small. Tampering is big. Perjury is also equally big. Yeah. The chief prosecutor, Ekaterina, knew there was no protection order. She knew all along. This is a letter from the ICC. It's not Matsanga who wrote here. Bench. Here, so, read it. So what, what does the letter the, say? The, 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 the letter, the, they wrote to the ICC to say, please, don't include in 2010, in November. Benji, read it. 
But it doesn't say much. It says, no, no. I Dear am Mr. Saying, Derek Asiedu, yes. thank you for your correspondence with our office. We acknowledge receipt of your letter dated 2nd November 2010. Yours sincerely, Michael Schmidt. Of what? You read it for the people. I'm not reading. What Chief, is the letter saying? Just, it just says, us, in know. short, the letter, let me show you. The letter says, Mr. James Maina Kabutu, Alliance Peter Karanja, had informed the ICC in October 2010 that please, Remove me from it is here. This is all the evidence of ICC is not Masanga. So remove so me here, from here. We have an international look here. This are the this is the, the ICC document. All right, but we, but we, how do we so, know that? How do you know that you wouldn't do that after inducement? We have no, an, no, 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 no. I, I, I am, that is not. I am not an international policeman to look hold, for hold those on. who induced him. Gentlemen, Mine was hold to hold blow hold out hold the hold whistle. Hold we have an international court here, yes. and we have an international court's prosecutor yeah. who is very experienced, yes. um, who comes to before the court and says, uh, Your Honours, I do not have uh, sufficient evidence to continue with this case based on the fact that my key witness is no longer a witness in this case. Yes. And at this point, uh, it she goes on to reveal that this actually became apparent to, to the office of the prosecutor long before this happened. What I'm asking is, what does this mean to the International Criminal Court itself and the office of the prosecutor in it particular? Because we are talking about the office, even if we don't even talk about uh, the persons, Louis Moreno, Campo, Fatou Ben Souda and the others, the office of the prosecutor of the highest court in the world. Yeah. What does it say? They about can that? do better to tidy up the process. Yes. They can certainly do better. But, but I would not rubbish the court as, as my. Brother. I am not rubbish. I, I think one of the things that uh, uh, people should understand me. I have not. I have respect for the court. It because doesn't sound the, that way, sir. I do. It doesn't sound that way. No, I sound and I want to tell you today on this national radio, and this is my last program about all this. I am telling you, I have respect for ICC. And Ndolo, it is me. Look at my face. Who went to Rome? You never went to Rome. I went to Rome when they were forming ICC. I stood in the cold to form ICC because at that time Uganda had a one-party state. We had nowhere to to, to take our take grievances. grievances. So I respect ICC. But one thing I don't respect is the the fakeness, the fakeness of witnesses, the coaching of witnesses by NGOs, by Mutua Macau, by 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 Maina Ma Kiai. I'm not going to mention many people's names who are no, not I, here. I don't want to I would mention meet. any name. Though. I would not. Yeah, I would, I would, not yeah, yeah, no, no, that's no. what I'm warning about. Uh, yeah, there is no here. warning. This is not a court. And this let, me, is, let me bring in this. Mokua. You've been very quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah there the gentleman who's just watching there people, here. There, there are people yeah. who who fake the evidence against others. No. This must. Yes. For me, what I'd like to say is that ICC is a very critical international body that has got a clear mandate in the world, and they need all the support that are, is necessary from the member states, so that if the office, and we shouldn't be looking at personalities, we shouldn't be looking at Ocampo or Ben Suda, but rather we should be looking at institutions. Yes. And because we have a case uh, pending at the ICC, they should be given all the support they need, that uh, the evidence which is coming before them must be very solid, that people must not be coached to give evidence, and on the same note, people must not be given any inducement to come out of the case. So for me, I think that's the bottom line. Because as a nation, we need to respect international institutions whereby we've appended our signatures. And gentlemen, let's not forget that more than 1,500 people died in Kenya exactly. in 2008. Yeah. There are very many people who were displaced and they are still displaced. Many people whose livelihoods were completely affected and they still haven't picked themselves up. And when you see um, their hopes starting to just... Um, go away like that Diminish. just because you see uh as it, it becomes apparent that there were investigations were not conducted properly that witnesses were not uh were not protected properly that some are alleged to have been coached what does this say to the victims i mean what kind of message is this going to the victims